You're about to see the Trompovsky attack, which is very easy to learn, universal and super tricky for your opponents. Moreover, in one of the main lines, you win in 7 moves. And just so that you know that it's not clickbait, let me show you this line right away. Your opponent, usually after you play d4, responds either symmetrically with a d5, kind of the queen's gambit, or knight f6. And in both cases, you are gonna use the same move, which is bishop to g5. And you start putting some pressure down here, and it's already a bit unpleasant. But of course, one of the first questions that your opponents will have in their mind is, hey, how about knight e4? And just move the knight away, and I counter the bishop, pushing it back. It looks almost as if it was a refutation of this move. But you play h4, and you just defend your bishop. Now, in most cases, they will take it. Because if not, this knight on e4 is shaky, it's on your half of the board, it's very easy for you to attack it later on one way or the other, black will have to waste time and retreat it back, so it feels for black like taking here makes a lot of sense. However, after this exchange, first of all, this pawn gives you some space advantage on the king side, plus you've got this rook on a very active position, which is gonna be a long-term problem for black. But again, feels very natural for black here to play e6 just because a standard development move plus it hits the pawn. And now there is a very interesting line here where you go g6 and you sacrifice this pawn. The sacrifice seemed to come from nowhere, like it doesn't make much sense at first, but nevertheless it makes sense. Now they can't take it with the h pawn because that would lose the rook and by the way that's the first little trap. But of course most of them will realize this and will capture with this pawn. Then you just play pawn e3. Your opponent is completely clueless, why did you give up a pawn and now you just develop? Anyway, it looks like their king side is slightly compromised, so they wish to just castle quickly. They play bishop e7, the most played move by far. Now, here you play bishop d3, and you already threaten bishop takes g6. That's another little trick that you have here along the way. So if they play any careless move, bishop takes g6 is very strong, now the pawn is pinned, and you attack the king, and like black is done. So let's take it back. Most of your opponents will notice this, and the vast majority of them will castle here, and now, 7 moves in the game, they're already lost. They're lost to this really interesting sacrifice rook takes h7. And before they know it, they're done. Like, this attack is so quick and so unexpected that no wonder black often misses this idea. Now, rook takes h7, sacrifice, then you play queen h5, another unpleasant surprise. It turns out that the pawn is pinned and cannot capture a queen. But it's checked to the king, it has to go, and now bishop takes g6, creates this perfect checkmating threat, queen to h7. Moreover, even if they try to move the rook somewhere and provide this escape square, it doesn't really help, because then it's checkmate anyway. What if after your queen's pawn move, they respond pawn to d5? That's the most popular move. You still play bishop g5, the same idea. Now, what do they do here? Well, the first fun fact to mention here is that according to the Leech's database, in more than half a million games, they played e6, blundering the queen in one move. I guess that many of them were bullet games, but nevertheless, like, there is a chance that your opponent will play their standard queen's gambit move and will blunder a queen. But of course, it's just a little trap along the way. In most cases, they will play knight f6, like the usual move. And then I suggest that you take it. You ruin their pawn structure and you create the position which is unpleasant for your opponents simply for the fact that they are not familiar with it and it's slightly unusual so they don't know how to handle it while you know after watching this video. So, you first play e3. There's a standard idea that once you traded off your dark squared bishop, you, you don't have it any longer, you want your central pawns to be on dark squares. This way, like your light squared bishop has a lot of nice diagonals to operate and so it's a good idea for you to do. Now, your opponent will play something, such as bishop d6, try and castle, and then you play c4, you're kind of playing standard queen's gambit game, knight c3, knight f3, very usual development, now you attack the center, but there is also one attacking plan which is unknown, but it's very powerful and that's why I'd love to share it with you. Now, your opponents will usually take here. If they don't take right away, like, you can always attack it again, like, forcing them to take. So we will come to this position anyway. They castle, you play knight to f3. And at this point, most of your opponents will go bishop g4. They need to develop their bishop anyway, plus amateur players love this pin so much. But it backfires so badly. You play pawn h3. In most cases, they'll wish to maintain the pin and they'll move their bishop back to h5. We'll talk about that in a moment. What if they take? Well, you could recapture with a queen, and you have a very nice position after that, but there's also a very interesting plan where you capture with a pawn, just aiming to attack right here. 
And because you've got opposite color bishops, they usually increase the power of your attack. So you've got your rook on the g file, you can play queen c2, and from distance, you're also putting pressure. You can, you know, push this pawn forward. Sometimes you can reposition your bishop to the same diagonal, and you can kind of put together this pretty strong attack, like within a couple of moves, and it's very unpleasant for black. Now, in most cases, as I said, they're not gonna trade, they're not gonna move the bishop back. They expect you to just castle and play a normal game of chess, but we've got something better. You play g4, bishop g6, and knight h4, and all of a sudden, you go into this all-in attack against their king. Normally, you don't want to do this when your king is in the middle of the board, but here, thanks to this strong pawn chain, it is safe, and you can just go for this all-out attack. They go knight d7, now you trade on g6, our bishop is always doing a great job putting pressure down here, so they have to recapture with this pawn, and now I play h4, just aiming for h5, opening the h-file, and checkmating him down this file. Now they go knight b6, trying to attack your bishop, but you just put it back to b3, nothing changes, we still operate along the same diagonal. Let's say they play queen e7 or whatever, you go h5. And like black seemingly plays proper moves, but somehow they're lost. <laughs> like, I have no clear explanation to this, but this just shows you how tricky this line is. Now, what's the point? Well, again, when I open up this file. Moreover, if they trade, like, you could just take it, and that would be all right. But queen d3 is also pretty strong. The idea here is that you allow him to seemingly take here, getting the second pawn, but then there is this sneaky checkmate. Now, what if they don't take the pawn? Well, they'll still have to face basically the same threat. Rook takes h5, followed by queen to h7, checkmate. And if they ever try to stop it by going g6, then we've got queen takes g6. It's a move which is very easy to overlook by black, because it seemed like their pawn chain was very strong, but no, like queen takes g6, ends the game. It turns out that our sniper bishop from b3 pins the pawn, and that's the trick. Now, somehow this bishop, although it's far away from the king side, is one of the key pieces that helps your attack. Now, the king has to go, and now rook takes h5, checkmate. Another cool thing about this bishop g5 move is that it is somewhat provocative, and strangely enough, it's quite popular for black to try to chase it away, but go in something like pawn h6 and then pawn g5. And although they indeed push your bishop back, but it's just a bad mistake for black. Why? Because they weaken their king side. And your bishop goes to g3, it's perfectly safe here, there's no way black for black to attack it any longer, plus your bishop is on this active diagonal. In fact, like in the London system, you do want to have your bishop on this active diagonal anyway, so it's a nice position for the bishop, but now the pawns are weakening black's position completely. Basically, they can never castle king side, it's going to be extremely dangerous, and they can't undo it, they can't move their pawns back, so it's a long-term weakness. Anytime you want to, you can play h4, start attacking it, activate your rook. So this h4, is h, h6 and g5, or f6 is g5, usually just overcommits for black, and you can take advantage of this. Like, I'll just show you one quick line to show you what it could happen to black after that. Let's say they develop somehow. You can play e4, sacrifice the pawn. And why do you do this? Well, you put pressure down here, but even more so, you just wanted to clear this path. And you play queen h5. And now black already starts suffering for the fact that their pawns can't move back, so he can't go g6 anymore. Which means that he has to play this super awkward move king d7, which, like, super clumsy, blocks the other pieces, plus the king is centralized, and that's the only piece that you don't want to have centralized in chess, right? So now I can just go knight c3, getting ready to maybe castle queenside and d5, bishop b5, all kinds of attack. I mean, it's very easy to attack if your opponent's king is so exposed. In most cases, they just take here, but then you simply castle queenside, put in the pin here, they try to defend it, uh, but then you can go bishop b5, check to the king. Now, the knight cannot take it because it's pinned down to the king, also, they can't go to the queen side because of our nice bishop on g3. Black helped us to put it to such a nice position, and now we take advantage of this. Which means that the only move for black to play is another weird move, king to e6. And of course, it's good that uh, the monarch is leading the army, but like not, not in chess. And here, I can even finish the game in style with something like knight of 3, and this knight is pinned, can't move. And if it's taken by the pawn, then we bring the rook into play, and it's going to be a checkmate within a couple of moves. For example, like, king goes here, bishop d3, checkmate. Let me share with you another common line. When they play knight of 6 and you bring the bishop out, they notice that it's unpleasant, they want to avoid doubling pawn, so they go e6. And this way, the knight is defended. However, now you can capitalize on this pin, and you can play e4 and grab the center. Plus, e5 is coming, again, taking advantage of the pin. 
in order to neutralize the pin they go bishop e7 but it's just a little bit passive and again your pawns are very strong here you can push the pawn forward drive the knight away it goes to d5 you could just take on e7 with a great position after that but i suggest that you go like in a little bit trickier direction you play bishop d2 and although it's a move back and usually you don't want to move back but here you use the fact that it's uh, like a little clumsy for black all these pieces and for lack of space black can't easily maneuver and their pieces are hampering each other so for instance now c4 is coming and this knight is, starts running out of squares now black usually goes c5 themselves trying to provide some breathing space for his pieces but now you go c4 pushing the knight back well, if it goes to b6 or c7 it's awkward in both places can't move really anywhere let's say knight b6 now it can trade on c5 bishop takes and here comes the move queen g4 very common attacking maneuver if you haven't played knight f3 yet and this diagonal is free you can go queen g4 and all of a sudden black somewhat feels uncomfortable because what do they they do now i mean if they defend, defend it with a king then they lose the right of castle their king is centralized the rook is locked in the corner they can't activate it pretty bad for black same thing to rook to g8 yes they defended the pawn but now they can't castle their king got stuck in the middle of the board after that you just developed normally you know while black has this exposed king what if they castle then there is standard tactics it's push up to h6 you take advantage of this pin and you already create a checkmate in threat of queen takes g7 so they have to play this g6 move which weakens their position terribly plus you can win the exchange all in all, black is left with the option of going pawn g6 here. But now all these dark squares are very weak. You see that all these checkers are problematic for black. And you want to play knight to c3 here. Why? Because you want to go knight e4. And from there, you can take advantage of all these dark squared weaknesses. And even if they go knight c6, that's what they usually do, attacking your pawn, your position is so strong that you can actually go knight e4 and even ignore this threat. Just because your threats are more powerful, you can overpower Black's attempt to counterplay. Now from here, you attack the bishop, and knight f6 threat is coming, attacking the king. But how about knight takes e5? That looks problematic. Well, not really. I mean, it's just a little pawn, but your attack is strong. You play queen g3, and now they have to defend this bishop, they have to defend this knight. So let's say they go bishop d4, trying to hold on to their position. But now bishop g5, and you just keep attacking all these dark squares. Now, your knight is also ready to jump to f6. Anyway, first of all, they have to move the queen away. And now you have a bunch of spectacular ways to attack here, really. You can play knight f6 pretty good. But there is also a pretty funny move, which I like a lot, because it's such an unusual idea here. It's you play queen a3. And all of a sudden, you're having pieces like queen and your bishop, your attacking from distance and queen e7 checkmate is coming although it's an obvious threat there is no defense for black strangely enough plus knight of six check is coming as well somehow like all these weaknesses are just so bad main threat of queen take e7 checkmate in one they can't castle because you control this square they can't cross it if they try a knight to c6 then they control this square good for them because of this bishop but they don't control this square so you go knight d6 check Check to the king, or bishop takes away these squares, which means the king of eight is forced, but now knight to b5 is a discover check, and we grab the queen on the next move. Like, really interesting and unusual way to, del to deliver this attack, and yet this is the best way for white, really, and really difficult for black to counter it. If you want to learn several most efficient ways to progress at chess, check out this free masterclass over there. It took me like 20 years to figure it out, and you can learn it right away. Either way, have a great rest of the day. Take care.